Welcome to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. A show all about reviewing dinosaurs on a scale of 1 to 10 fossils before only the elite terrible lizards make it into the prehistoric cage match. This program is presented by the Stomp Tromp Roar Company and can be heard within all the rock layers across the planet. Grab your dinosaurs and your official scorecard because it's now time to dig for dinosaurs. Here's your Mesozoic host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. The dinosaurs are coming! The dinosaurs are coming! Now welcome back my Continental Rangers to another episode of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. I'm your general, I'm Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Now today is our 4th of July themed episode of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast and that's because on Monday of this week many of us here in the United States of America celebrated our Independence Day and the day our nation declared our freedom back in 1776. Now today's species is found in many of the original 13 colonies that fought and won for our freedom back when the British army surrendered in Yorktown, Virginia in 1781. Now, no dinosaur body fossil has been found in Virginia, but we find many trace fossils. Now, a trace fossil is like footprints, and they give a trace or an activity from the past. Just like we know dinosaurs ran and walked around, and they left their footprints down in the soil. Now, back in 1989, the same year I was born, nearly 5,000 dinosaur tracks were unearthed in the Culpeper Stone quarry in Stevensburg, Virginia. Now these tracks date back to the Triassic period and at one time were the largest concentration of dinosaur tracks on earth, on earth. Can you believe that? Now many of these tracks also happen to be today's featured dinosaur. But before, uh, but first let's update you guys on some Dinopreneur news before we get started on today's dinosaur review. Now you guys, Camp Stomp Chomp Roar is this week and I'm having so much fun with all my junior campers. So a quick shout out to all my campers who joined me on Monday's Zoom lesson. We have Anastasia, Leroy, Ernest, Wyatt, Rowan, Canyon, Mattia, Lincoln, and Cecilia. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Monday's virtual lesson as we talked about what is a dinosaur, massive carnivores, the five major dinosaur families, and we even even met Paleo, our baby Spinosaurus, before we did our toy show and tell. Now today will be our second Zoom lesson of Camp Stomp Chomp Roar here a little bit later today and we're going to talk all about fossils, how a fossil forms. We're even going to make our very own fossils right after I show everybody my replica fossil collection. So it's going to be so much fun and I cannot wait for day three of Camp Stomp Chomp Roar. Now on Monday, you guys, I even drove my Jurassic Jeep in the neighborhood 4th of July parade. It was lots of fun and if you want to check out some pictures of my Jeep all decorated for the parade, just go to my Facebook page. Just search Stomp Chomp Roar on Facebook. Now, do you guys not live here in the Omaha, Nebraska area? Well, don't worry because you can book one of my at-home virtual lessons on my website from anywhere in the world. Just go to stompchomproar.com and click on that packages tab and you'll be able to see some of my virtual lessons I offer for at-home families or even maybe a daycare, a preschool, or an elementary school from anywhere in the world. Now, that leads us into our shout-outs for today. So, shout out to Brilliant Brains Learning Center. I'll be visiting your child care center here in just a few hours. So super pumped to come and bring my uh, my fossil cart to all your kiddos over there. Now, shout out to Ashland Public Library. We'll be visiting your library tomorrow on Thursday, bringing our prehistoric pep rally to all your summer readers. Super pumped for this one, you guys. Then on Friday, I'll be heading back to the Durham Museum here in Omaha to be a part of their Fossil Fridays. So if you're here 
here in the Omaha area, go ahead and come out to the Durham Museum. Come say hi to me. I'll be there every Friday throughout the rest of July. They're from 10 a.m. to noon, and at 11 a.m., I do my fossil show. Then shout out to Bellevue Public Library. I'll be bringing my prehistoric pep rally to that library on Saturday of this week to entertain and educate all their summer reading program readers. Now, you guys, let's go ahead and grab our scorecards because it's time for today's Dynamite Species. It's time for our next review. So let me go ahead and grab my scorecard, you guys. And as always, you can print off these scorecards at home. Just go to my website, stompchomproar.com. Click on that Science Lab tab, and you'll see the post about the Dinosaur Review for Kids. And you'll be able to click on that and print off the free PDF file of the official scorecard. Now, here we go on today's official review. We're doing it on no one other but the Ankysaurus. The Ankyosaurus, and that is today's featured species. Now, the Ankyosaurus means close or near lizard. And not because it's close to a lizard, it's because it's close to the ground. It lays close to the ground. It's the Ankyosaurus. So the Ankyosaurus, you guys, what is the dinosaur order? So our Ankyosaurus is a type of Cerisian dinosaur. These are the lizard-hipped dinosaurs, some of the sauropods, theropods. Then, does is it a sauropod? Is it a theropod? Is it a sauropodomorph? What is it? It has been kind of going back and forth, and we'll talk about some of its characteristics here in just a moment. But officially, right now, it is a cerisian, the lizard hip dinosaurs. Then it's a sauropodomorph, a sauropodomorph, and then it falls into its own family, the Ankyosauridae. So cerisian, sauropodomorph, and then Ankyosauridae. So how big was this dinosaur? What was its length, its height, and its weight. Well, the Ankyosaurus is around 6.5 feet long, or 2 meters, up to 3 feet high, or 1 meter, and weighing only about 60 pounds. So this creature is very Velociraptor-like, very small, only 6.5 feet long, from nose to tail, only 3 feet high, right there at the hips, and weighing only 60 pounds. Now, how fast was this dinosaur? How fast did the Ankyosaurus go? Well, you guys, it's very unknown how fast this creature would have went. It can be quadrupedal and bipedal. Quadrupedal, remember, you walk on four legs. Bipedal, you walk on two legs. So it can get down onto a quadrupedal stance, but then it can also rear up on its hind legs or maybe even run on two legs. Something we kind of see in like our duckbill dinosaurs can be four-legged or two-legged as they're walking or running around their environment. Now, the miles per hour is very unknown on this small creature. You know, we have the Compsognathus, very small, can get up to about 40 miles per hour, but our Ankyosaurus is more of a sauropod, but a lot, lot smaller. I'm thinking it's probably still going to be maybe, I would, if I had to take a guess right here on our podcast, maybe between 18 to maybe 24 miles per hour for our Ankyosaurus. Now, what is the weapons, defense, or other characteristics of our Ankyosaurus? So let me paint a picture for you guys what this dinosaur looks like. Imagine like an Apatosaurus, but make it go way, 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 way small to only about six and a half feet long and three feet high. So it's a type almost of a sauropod, and that's why it's a sauropodomorph. These are tiny, tiny sauropods, sort of like our prosaurus sauropods who are the, uh, they're before our sauropods, so they're, they're pre-sauropods, but these are the sauropodomorphs. So these ones, you guys, are small, two-legged sauropod-like dinosaurs with five toes, just like me and all you guys. Now, they use their front legs almost like hands. They believe they could turn inwards for grasping, maybe getting all kinds of foliage, or maybe, maybe some prey. Are they eating meat? Or are they eating plants? Now, they have fierce thumb claws claws, and they believe that once that maybe they were a set of meat eater thumb claws for grasping all kinds of prey. Now they have a beak and a triangular like small head with frontward facing eyes. You guys, they have all the characteristics of a carnivore. They have these thumb claws. Their hands go inwards for grasping. They 
have frontward facing eyes so that if they're hunting a creature, they're looking straight forward with great depth perception. But you guys, they believe our Ankyosaurus is actually a herbivore, a plant eater. So they have a long neck and the neck is longer than their limbs, longer than their arms and legs. They have blunt, spoon-shaped teeth. That's right, their teeth are meant for be it biting all kinds of soft and easy plants. So they believe this creature, our Ankyosaurus, was once a type of meat eater, a carnivore. And as it started evolving throughout the Triassic period, it is kind of turning into more of our sauropod, our sauropodomorph. So our Ankyosaurus is developing the characteristics to become a herbivore and starting to go away from the carnivore characteristics. So it has those leaf-shaped teeth for eating all kinds of plants. Now they have a long tail and that's helping counterbalance their bodies when they're on four or two legs running around their environment or maybe down on four legs scrounging around for all kinds of vegetation. They believe they have an increased gut or stomach so they can hold all that vegetation they're eating throughout their environment and they even swallow those gastrolis that we talk about occasionally where birds or dinosaurs swallow little rocks or pebbles and that helps them digest all those plants as it's sitting in their gizzards. Now you guys, they also believe our Ankyosaurus lived in small groups. So where did this dinosaur live and how long did this species live during the Mesozoic era? So our Ankyosaurus is about 201 to 200 million years ago during the late Triassic period when they find it in the fossil record. Now it's found in the northeastern United States of America, like I mentioned, above in many of those original 13 colonies we see from the early days of America. Now it was found originally back in 1818 and they thought it was just a, a human bone. They thought it was a bone from a human. And then it was found again in 1855 and this is when they knew that it was a dinosaur because the term dinosaur had been coined back in 1842. So now in 1855 we know what dinosaurs are. So this creature or Ankyosaurus becomes a dinosaur and it was named in 1865 by Edward Hitchcock. So very cool, very, very nice for our Ankyosaurus. Now it was in 1855, everyone, it was named because it was discovered in Springfield, Massachusetts at an armory and it was a part of an on-site explosive. So they were exploding all kinds of the ground to build a water well. So maybe there was all kinds of fireworks going off which fits in perfectly with our 4th of July episode right here on the Dinosaur Review for Kids. Now you guys, it was actually renamed twice. So when they originally named it back in 1865, our Ankyosaurus was called the Megadactylus. The Megadactylus. And then they actually found out that was already a name for a type of animal, a type of creature, or maybe even a type of past reptilian. So they got rid of Megadactylus from this specific dinosaur and O.C. Marsh, one of the famous uh, paleontologists from the Bone Ores, renamed it in 1885 the Amphiosaurus. So the Amphiosaurus. But then it was renamed again a third time and it became the Ankyosaurus that we know today. The close or near lizard and that's because this one's close to the ground. A type of sauropodomorph so you guys, a quick recap about our Ankyosaurus. This is a Saurischian, and then a Sauropodomorph, and then an Ankyosauridea. It's only about six and a half feet long, or two meters, only three feet high, or one meter, and only 60 pounds. So a very, very small dinosaur. It's miles per hour running, maybe around 20 miles per hour, and then it looks like a sauropod. Imagine a Patasaurus all the way down, only six and a half feet long, but occasionally getting up and running or walking on two legs. Very, very small, small two-legged sauropod like dinosaur, five toes. They have those hands that point inward with those thumb claws, eyes that are frontward facing. They have the small triangular, small head, and they have the long necks and the long tail behind them, plus those blunt spoon-shaped teeth for eating all kinds of plants. And they lived back during the Triassic period. Now, 
what are we going to rate or score our Ankyosaurus on the official results for the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast? So this is a very small dinosaur. It lives in herds, so the herd or the small group is going to help protect it a little bit. No defensive weapons on its body. They do have those thumb claws, uh, but they're not using them very much anymore for all kinds of hunting and getting prey. They're probably using them more for getting foliage, maybe getting some tree roots, maybe digging in into the tree's trunk, maybe getting all, all kinds of little bugs or little insects, uh, maybe tiny reptiles. So this one, you guys, at the end of the day, I'm going to score our Ankyosaurus a 3.5. There we have it, a 3.5 for our Ankyosaurus. There we go, a 3.5, everybody. Yankee Doodle went to town a riding on a dino. He struck a fossil in his hat and called it Macaroni. Did that song go good? I don't think so. But you guys, what did you think about today's patriotic review? Did the Ankyosaurus score good for America? A 3.5, it's still maybe not so much the best score, but it's still an awesome dinosaur. So now before this week's podcast, I didn't know anything about this dinosaur species, but I had so much fun learning all about it. And this is something I'm having my junior campers do tomorrow on Thursday. As part of day four of Camp Stomp Chomp Roar, I'll be sending them all a dinosaur research guide for my summer camp, and I'll be asking the campers to research a dinosaur species that they know nothing about, because it's always tons of fun reading and learning about a new creature, especially a dinosaur. Now, you guys, a quick joke before we go today. What's the difference between a duckbill dinosaur and George Washington? Hmm. What's the difference between a duck-billed dinosaur and George Washington? Well, you guys, one has a bill on its face and the other has its face on a bill. Get it? Because George Washington is on the $1 bill and a duck-billed dinosaur, they've got a bill on their face. Well, nonetheless, you guys, only one more species left before we find out the next two dinosaurs who will face off one-on-one -on -one inside the prehistoric cage match. Are you guys ready to head back to the arena? I sure am. As always, you guys, my name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, the awesome host for the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. And as always, keep digging for dinosaurs. We'll see you guys next time. Wow!